It's, uh, that's awfully nice of y'all. Thank you. Uh, thank you for being here this morning. I have a little secret to my success, and part of it is I spend a little, as little time in Washington as I have to. And uh, when, uh, when Henry told me about this event, I said, of course I'd do it, uh, And because uh, I'll do anything for Henry. And, and this, uh, this, uh, this program is amazing. My mother used to work for TRIO. Um, y'all do, y'all just do an incredible, incredible work. Uh, a lot of times people don't realize what it takes to be successful. They think it's uh, X, Y, or Z, and it's never what you think it is. It's always the, support, the surrounding support network that ultimately gets somebody over the finish line, especially somebody that, you know, shouldn't be there, if you will, right? That, that they're, they're up against the odds. Uh, and, uh, you know, part, part of my success has been, uh, I don't take any shit from anybody. <laughs> I have uh, fought tooth and nail from the very beginning. I'll fight tooth and nail from the very end. Uh, I love this country. Um, the, the Lord has blessed me with six beautiful children. I always say, I got six kids, I don't scare easy. <laughs> um, you know, politics is, is it's a tough business and, and you better be ready. But it's also an area where, you, man, you can make a lot of change. You can do a lot of good. You can, you, there's so many beautiful people in this country that, uh, that are just going to work and just trying to make their communities better. And, and I want to thank TRIO for everything that y'all do. You know, um, I'm a high school dropout. I'm a high school dropout, and now I'm a member of Congress. I mean, this is the, this is the country we live in. And it does, nothing's given to you. You've got to fight for it. You've got to go out there and roll up your sleeves. But you also need people around you to help get there. No one, no one is successful alone. No one. You got to have people around you. Sometimes it's your family. Sometimes it's people that don't even know you. And I know y'all have kids uh, that y'all help every single day. That uh, that you have you have you gain nothing from it other than just uh, providing somebody maybe a different opportunity, a different path of things. And and I want, I'm th I'm grateful for what y'all do. Uh, you're going to communities that that a lot of people have forgotten about. A lot of people are looking past and you're doing wonderful things. So, you know, it's my honor to be here today. Um, and it's my honor, honestly, to fight for you in Congress. Um, and, and it is a fight. Boy, is it a fight. But lucky for you, I love to fight. <laughs> You know, the other part is, is these, these kids that we're helping, too, all over the country, um, you know, th they often don't get a chance to kind of say thank you. And I guarantee you, as I, one of the special things in this gig, you get to meet so many people, is uh, they are grateful for all the work that you are doing. Um, and, and so keep it up. And I'm, it's great to see so many people from all across the country. Uh, it, it, you know, D.C. DC is a special place. Our nation's capital is a special, special place. Uh, one of the things that, that I'm, I'm, I just always pinch myself in awe is, uh, is my voting card, right? I mean, there's 435 of these voting cards, and I'm one of them. And so, you know, I've hoped, I hope you all have enjoyed your time here at the nation's capital. Um, it's great to see that it's open again and people are hustling. And, you know, it's great to see. I, I love the fact that half the people are on the Hill already working. I, I love that. I think that's great, and I think it's important. I mean, this is ultimately how you make change, and, and you know what? You got to push us as lawmakers because sometimes we forget. A lot of times, we forget. You know who we work for. Uh, the reason I love being in the district, man. I, when I'm in the district back home, I'm in jeans and boots. Nobody comes up to me and calls me congressman. It's always Tony. Uh, and when I'm in Washington, everyone sees a pen. And, every, you know, you're this fancy congressman. But it's important to remind us, hey, we work for you, right? So I love the fact that you are pushing and being strong advocates for your program because ultimately without that, nothing happens alone, nothing. It's not just going to fall in your lap. You're not just going to get the same resources you've always been getting. Don't take anything for granted. Y'all already know this. you got to work. you got to push. And you got to ultimately deliver. Now, that's the easy part for your organization because you're delivering over and over again. I want to talk briefly about, uh, about being a veteran and then happy to take any questions with the time we have remaining. You know, I, I, uh, I, I've lived on my own since I was 15 years old. 
worked two and three jobs to get to high school. I was a half credit away from graduating, and my grandfather, who was the most influential person in my life, he taught me how to drive, he taught me how to shave, he taught me how to chase women. <laughs> he taught me everything. And at 18, he passes away. And down this spiral I went. I remember I dropped out of high school. I'm working at this glass factory uh, with a bunch of convicts. Uh, nothing against it, it was fine, but it was just, it, it wasn't my path. And I remember God pulling me out of that and setting me, setting me on my journey. And my, my father was in the army, my grandfather was in the army, uh, come from a big army family. I thought I was gonna join the army. And so I go to the army recruiter and I ask him, uh, you know, I, I, I complete my ASVAB, score really well on that. And he goes, uh, man, you did great. Uh, this is a deal, we need you to get a GD and then we'll get you in. I'm like, look man, if I wanna get a GD, I'd have done that three years ago. I, I've been fighting for this high school diploma. And he goes, sorry, that's all we got. And so uh, I go home defeated that day and my cousin calls and my cousin was in the Navy. And he goes, Tony, you should join the Navy. I go, why would I do that? One, I don't know how to swim. Uh, two, I don't like sailors. I don't like water. I don't like ships. He's like, you knucklehead, just go. You don't have to be on a ship, you know, just go. So I go to the Navy recruiter and he goes, uh, man, boy, do we got a deal for you. He goes, we can make you a cryptologist. I'm like, I don't even know what that is. He goes, neither do I. And, and he gets his paper out and he reads this paper, working with the National Security Agency, technology, top secret clearance. It was absolutely amazing. And I go, that sounds pretty good. Uh, but what sold me is the Navy had a program where I could get my high school diploma while I was in the service. And I was sold. So I shipped out that Friday. I learned to swim when they pushed me in the deep end of the pool. <laughs> At, at, at boot camp, and I got my high school diploma from the state of Florida. I go on, I get my uh, associate's degree, my bachelor's degree, my master's degree, and I was halfway done with my PhD before uh, I got elected to Congress. I, I, sell that, I tell that story because all of us in this room and all the people that we help have a story, right? It's good, some parts are good, some parts are bad. It's just part of life. And, and we never wanna talk about the bad parts. I mean, it took me forever to talk about being abandoned by my father, you know, spending time in a battered women's shelter. These aren't things that you want to share. I'm, I mean, I've never shared that. Uh, and, and you'll quickly learn as a, a, a public servant, there is nothing private about you anymore, right? And so um, I, we all have a story. Remember your story and help the kids that you, that you are, 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 are pushing help them remember their story. It's part of what, the good and bad, it's part of what makes us so resilient and strong. So um, Navy was great to me. I, I came in as an E1, I retired as an E9, it's a master chief. About less than 1% of the enlisted force makes it to that rank. And I remember when I was running for Congress, I was, oh, I'm a retired master chief. Nobody knows who that is, right? <laughs> I'm like, man, I'm like, nothing, right? And I'm like, well, I'm a veteran. Oh, man, you're a veteran. I'm like, oh my goodness. But I, I, love, I love the Navy because it gave me the one thing I was missing in life, which was opportunity. And that's what y'all are doing for the kids that y'all represent. You're giving them an opportunity. Now, what, do, what they do with that opportunity, that's on them. But the fact that they're, get an, they're you're given an opportunity, it's the hardest thing to deliver. So uh, veterans, veterans, you know, oftentimes they, uh, they fight our nation's war, our wars. They, they fight the wolves abroad. I spent five years in Iraq and Afghanistan, um, and I know y'all do a lot of work with veterans, and I'm grateful for that. I guarantee you our veterans are grateful for that. Once again, it's a community that is quiet and oftentimes forgotten, but these are the people that are ultimately the fabric of our country that help, you know, uh, help us be who we are. So I, I just, you know, I'm here, I'm here because Henry made me be here. <laughs> But I, am, but I am grateful, I am grateful for everything that y'all do, and I'm grateful for, for everything, for all the people that you help all over the country, and, and, and I'm in. You count me as a friend, uh, and anything y'all need. What would, you, what would you tell us to tell them, um, to encourage them not to, not to drop out, but to finish? I mean, look, a, a large part of my success is because of the education opportunities that were opened up to me. 
Uh, I, I wouldn't be here if I didn't get that high school diploma, if I didn't get that associate's degree, if I didn't get that bachelor's degree, if I didn't get that master's degree, if I didn't start working on my PhD. And it's, it's less to do with the piece of paper and it's more to do with your ability to solve problems and dedicate energy towards finishing something, completing something. Uh, I, I think that's, that's a powerful thing. Once you can complete one thing, then you can complete two things and three things. It, it, it doesn't matter what gets thrown your way. Once you give up on something, all of a sudden you're, it, it's easier to give up. Life is tough. It's easy to give up plenty of times when you go, you know what, I gave it the old good try. We're as far about as far as we can get on this deal, and probably this is a good exit route. You got to power through that. I mean, nothing is given, especially for the, you know, the, the, the kids that you are helping, there's nothing easy for them. You know, they may have, you know, I, I, six kids. My oldest daughter, you know, I had her when I was 19. You know, I, I say we grew up together, right? Yeah. So maybe, maybe they already have a child. Maybe they have a, a, a parent that they're helping out. You know, maybe they're working two or three jobs. And at some point, that weighs you down. Life just weighs you down, and you go, I'm out. But you got to be able to power through. And I think that's what's so powerful about this organization is giving that shot in the arm to kids that are teetering and, and be able to go, like, look, you're not alone. But so I look at my success if I wouldn't have gotten my high school diploma, none of this would have happened. None of it. And you know what's interesting, too, is, is one, I've never walked the stage, not in any capacity, right? So it was never important for me to get status or any of that, right? It was, it was a different aspect of just completing something. So I think that's a powerful to, part of it, too. The other part, the, I think the other powerful part that needs to be relayed is, uh, you know, you don't always get it. You don't get to choose what what hand you get, mm -hmm. but you get to choose what you do with that hand. Mm -hmm. And things don't have to be they be the way that they're supposed to be. For say, you know, my, my mother and I we had a very tough uh, kind of uh, upbringing. Um, you know, once again, spending time in a battered women's shelter. My my mother's been through hell and back. What's so beautiful about this story, and I don't get to share it often is my mother now lives with me. My mother raises our six, helps raise uh, Angel and I, our six children, and she is loved. That woman is loved. She, it's, it's also pure chaos in the <laughs> Gonzalez house. There is, there is always something going down. But what, what needs to be shared with your students is they can change the direction of their life. And it starts by them completing something. Right, that high school diploma is probably that first step. Maybe a bachelor's or, or something along those, or a certificate, or you know, all these different programs that y'all offer as well. One more question: Do the Navy still have that program? <laughs> you, this is interesting. This is great. So I sit on the Appropriations Committee. Henry knows there's three types of members of Congress: there's Republicans, there's Democrats, and there's Appropriators. <laughs> okay. All right. So once a year, every department comes before before our committee and they beg for money, right? So once a year, they got to be on their best behavior, okay? So the services come up before, right? And they're saying all these different things. And retention is one of the things that comes up, right? And they're talking about, well, we're not going to hit our retention goals. We need money. We're not going to hit our retention goals, X, Y, or Z. So the, the Army, the, uh, the, the most uh, the sergeant major of the Army, most senior enlisted guy in the Army, you know, they're bringing up retention. And I'm, I'm being good. I mean, these are, you know, like I said, I'm very pro, uh, pro military, and I know a lot of these people. And they start talking about retention, but they also talk about the quality of candidates. Mm -hmm. And he goes, Y'all will be happy to know that we no longer take people that are, don't have a high school diploma. We no longer offer some of these things. So the quality of our candidates is much higher than it was in years past. So that may be what's something that is impacting our numbers. And I go, really? And I go, <laughs> clearly he didn't do his homework, right? And I was good into the point, and then I let, him, I let him have both barrels, right? And I go, here's the deal. I tried to join the Army, but I wasn't good enough for the Army, right? And, and guess what the Army missed out on? They missed out on a Master Chief, right? 1% of the enlisted force. <laughs> they missed out on a Congressman, and more importantly, they missed out at somebody who's going to be writing the check to the Army. <laughs> Yeah. 
It did not go well for him. The Navy guy was, was quick to go. We still have that program, and we're, we, <laughs> we would like to expand it. So uh, that program is still around in some capacities. Thank you, Congressman. Any other questions? Morning, Master Chief. Uh, so, Senior Chief retired. Fantastic. Uh, I'm the Veterans Upward Bound Project Director here in D.C. And I don't really have a question for you. I just would ask that when you get the opportunity, D.C. is often a forgotten about area of a lot of veterans in need. And my program is probably step three in their process from homelessness to education. So anything we can do to help the vets in our nation's capital would be much appreciated. I love it, man. Uh, come see me. Absolutely. Yeah. Good morning. Uh, Siobhan Neal from Southeastern Louisiana University, president of our National Association of Veterans of Rebound. And I echo what he just mentioned in that we have a lot of veterans that live in rural areas and that we reach out to. And so some of the feelings and difficulties that they experience in being, whether it be homelessness, the shame, guilt, and what you mentioned in not finishing high school, that touches my heart in the way of the veterans that we work with. We have quite a few of them that didn't get their GED or high set and just feel like that's just a dream dissolved. What other message, because you've given us so many great bullet points, can we do to motivate and inspire them toward that completion? Um, we have a lot of Vietnam era veterans in our programs and I feel like the spirit of VUB is um, just kind of uh, fizzling out a little bit, if you will. And it was really the, the purpose for our Veterans Upper Bound programs. Yeah, uh, veterans are a tough bunch. They're, they're a tough bunch to work with, uh, mainly because they don't trust you. They don't trust people, right? And that's uh, probably the number one thing that you got to build out. Well, I think with anyone, but in, the, in that demographic in particular is trust. Like, what do you want from me? How, you know, you just, you just check out. You give up on a lot of different things. Uh, probably because you're having to deal with the VA. Anyone that has to deal with the VA, it's just a bureaucratic process that just gets you to just check out. I, I, you know, as a Master Chief, I'd help thousands of soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines transition out of the military into civilian life, right? Thousands. And then when it was time for me to transition, I even knew what I wanted to do. Even when it was time for me to transition, I was freaking out. There was just so many things that I'm like, I gotta fill out all this stuff and you got all through all these hoops. I mean, honestly, if it wasn't for my wife, Angel, that basically handheld me, right? I would have missed out on a lot of the benefits that were due to me. And so I, I think about that moment all the time. And like I said, I had my stuff together. I was ready to go. It's just, it's a very overwhelming. So um, I, I think this is an area that's really important uh, that y'all can provide to veterans, just another resource to help them through. And then ultimately connect us with, you know, the, the offices that can do the work, right? Uh, and help them get the, the, the resources they need. Y'all know this, it's never about what it's about. It's always something else, right? It's always, hey, I don't have a place to, to stay. I don't have anything to eat or, uh, or, or, or you know, just all these other life issues that come around. And you can't, always, you can't solve a lot of those things, right? You just kind of connect different folks. So, you know, part of, our, part of our, my job is, is, is to help veterans. A big part of our job is to help veterans. And so helping navigate that process, I mean, I can't tell you how many people. I was in, um, I was in uh, where was I? I was in Fort Stockton. Henry knows this, out in West Texas, right? It was a pretty cool moment. I got to, I got to throw the first pitch out at this uh, minor league baseball game. And it was like a minor, minor, minor league baseball game, right? I mean, these guys get paid $400 a month to play baseball, right? Uh, and uh, so it was cool. I'm throwing the, throwing the first pitch at the game. Town's there. And it was a lot of fun. I'm walking around, working the crowd afterwards. And there's these four gentlemen that, uh, that pull me aside and they're just, man, they're just tearing into me. They're just tearing into me, just like, bam, you don't do this. You do You're not bipartisan enough. You don't do enough. I'm like, me? I'm like, man, okay. And it just, they're just tearing into me, right? And then I'm like, okay. I take it, smile on my face. I'm like, all right, well, well I, got, I gotta go. I gotta get, let, let, let other people get a little bite of me too. So uh, I walk away and one gentleman steps aside and he goes, I just wanna thank you, your office, help me uh, get my VA claim that I've been waiting on for 20 years. 
right? And he goes, he goes, you know, I appreciate everything that you're doing. I'm like, why didn't you say that in front of the group <laughs> two minutes ago? <laughs> so, so helping people in a real manageable, I mean, like in a real tangible way, that's ultimately how we solve some of these other issues. So lean on us. So lean on us. Let us know uh, whatever we can do to help. But you, you help these people, it changes their life, right? And all of a sudden now he's getting the, the, what, what was already owed to him. That's the, that's the hardest thing about veterans is, is one, they, they get tired of the bureaucracy and they just give up. You got to go, no, 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 this isn't about you. This is about getting what is owed to you. One more question. Just real quick, it's more of a statement. Um, just piggybacking on what you said. Uh, Erica Alvarez, San Antonio College uh, Veterans uh, Student Support Services. Um, we are only one veteran service program for the college level in the state of Texas. So just one. So TRIO is a great organization to be part of, but we need more help. So I, my ask for you is to please sit with the um, other members of Congress to ask and let them know these stories. So veterans come to me um, in my program, again, exiting the military or retiring from the military and coming in, not knowing what to do next. We were fortunate enough for Senator Menendez to give us $7 million for the San Antonio College uh, campus to be able to put up a victory center. So it's a one-stop shop. We have the VA in there, we have uh, trios in there, and then our disability services as well. But there are so many. We have 3,900 veterans, Military City USA, right, San Antonio? 3,900 military veterans that come to our campus, and I only get to serve 120 of those. So we really need the help. Yeah, and I, I agree with you. Before Tony answers or responds, uh, be sure to invite him. Yes. And thank him because this man is fighting for TRIO. Yes. So invite him and, and acknowledge him for his help in San Antonio. Absolutely. Tony. Yeah, no, I, I love that. Yeah, I'm in, and, the, and and Henry knows those those visits are very powerful. Uh, they're just they're helpful. They're helpful for me. It gives me a shot in the arm. It, you know, it just. You're helping real people, right? And um, and uh, yeah, anything anything that we can do to help that that center is beautiful, by the way. And uh, I look at that and I go, why aren't there more of these? Because you have to have a place to build off of. Uh, my uh, my oldest daughter just graduated from UTSA in San Antonio. My oldest son is going to UTSA, and and they don't. I mean, there's a large campus, like 50,000 kids at this university. They don't have a veteran center. I mean, it's just absolutely mind-boggling some of the places and you got to have a place to, to go if you're going to build something on from there so um whatever i can do to help in any form or fashion i'm grateful uh, you know uh, i'm in i'm in so yeah get me out to your programs get me out. and it's not just it's not just my district either the way i view it is my, my state's important so if you're somewhere in texas reach out and the country is important. I mean, it's it's nothing for me to go to a, a school here in Washington, in, in D.C. Or it's, you know, while we're doing another event somewhere else, we stop and, and visit something else. So, uh, let us highlight whatever we can do for you.